Earth, our planet, our home. Here we continue with our lives, dealing with our problems, appreciating its beauty. We look at the night sky. Some of us think about how it will be to visit each object. We imagine being able to travel through space and see them up close. So let's do it. Let's pass our lives down here for a moment. Let's leave behind our planet and embark on a journey through the cosmos. When we return, perhaps we'll see it in a different way. Our first destination will be the closest celestial body, the Moon. bright and spectacular. It has generated many myths and legends. Its gravity causes high and low tides on Earth. It's full of craters. From up here, we cannot perceive their details. The scars left behind by millions of asteroids and comets that have impacted it for millions of years. Some are small and simple. Others are enormous, with diameters of tens of miles, punctuated with a peak in the middle that emerged when the material from the gigantic impact that formed it splashed back. Some are strange. The moon has its own beauty. Ancient lava rivers. Beautiful mountainous landscapes. Some compete with Mount Everest in height. Twelve humans have left their footprints. As there is no wind to erase them, they'll remain there for millions of years. We barely left our planet. We can still see it at 240,000 miles. Our next destination is a bit further away. Venus seems harmless at first glance. On Earth, it shines in the morning in the east and in the afternoon in the west. Known as Earth's evil twin, it's almost the same size, but it's a toxic hell, incredibly hot and with crushing pressures on its surface. It's the hottest planet in the solar system, up to 471 degrees Celsius. So hot that it can melt lead. 
its dense atmosphere traps heat. Here it rains sulfuric acid, but it's so hot that the drops evaporate before they touch the ground. Spacecraft have only survived a few hours after landing on the planet before being destroyed. It's full of volcanoes. Lava flows carve huge meandering channels. Let's head towards the sun. The closer we get, the more intense the heat becomes. But first, we have to make a stop. Mercury, the planet closest to the sun. It's extremely hot but also extremely cold. During the day, the planet can reach around 430 degrees Celsius, and at night it plummets to minus 180 degrees Celsius. Mercury is small in comparison to Earth, but has a powerful gravitational pull. It's very dense, almost as dense as Earth due to its huge metallic core. The sun is fascinating. We depend on it. It's our light, our heat, our energy. We are so far away that its light takes eight minutes to reach Earth. It's huge. Around 1.3 million Earths could fit inside the sun. It's very hot on the surface, extremely hot, more than 5,000 degrees Celsius. But this is nothing compared to its center. The conditions are hellish, around 15 million degrees Celsius. Besides that, the pressure is so extreme that hydrogen atoms fuse to form a heavier element, helium. In the process, a huge amount of energy is released, equivalent to detonating 400 billion one megaton nuclear bombs every second. If we move away a bit and block out all the blinding light, we can see the corona, a stream of subatomic particles that emanate from the sun, extending for millions of miles. On Earth, it can only be seen during a total eclipse. The surface is chaotic. It's so hot inside the sun that electrons are stripped from their primary atoms in the gas, creating what is called plasma, a gaseous soup of charged particles. Its movement generates a powerful magnetic field. The plasma glows from the intense heat but as it cools down, it dims, sits on the surface, creating a dark spot. The plasma on the surface can also flow along magnetic circuits, 
this can create enormous arcs of material. These fire arcs extend for thousands of miles across the sun. If conditions are right, a giant short circuit is created. All that vast energy stored explodes outward. A solar flare. It's interesting to think that our lives depend on this hellish world. Mars, the red planet, has captured our imagination for centuries. It was once thought to be the god of war. How many science fiction novels and movies have been made about Mars? Today, it's one of the most explored worlds in our solar system. We have learned a lot. It's a curious world of diverse landscapes, a place where life may have existed. From here, the highest mountain in the solar system is better appreciated. Olympus Mons, an ancient volcano at 16 miles high, three times higher than Mount Everest. Imagine the view from the top. Males Marineris has a depth of up to 6.2 miles. From east to west, it's 2,500 miles long. The Grand Canyon is tiny in comparison. We couldn't survive here without a spacesuit. The atmosphere is very thin. The pressure on the surface is less than 1% of Earth's pressure. The air is mostly carbon dioxide. During the day, temperatures can reach 20 degrees Celsius, but at night it plummets to minus 73 degrees Celsius. However, the atmosphere is substantial enough to interact with the surface. The winds blow seasonally filling craters with dust. Also, it blows dust creating beautiful dunes. In this world, sunsets are blue. The time is coming when humans will witness these sunsets in person. The perseverance, in addition to searching for signs of ancient life, has been testing technologies that will aid human exploration. Many minds are working at this moment to bring humans to Mars. On the way to our next destination, we find many asteroids. We're traversing the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. 
It contains around 1.9 million asteroids over one kilometer in diameter. Some have diameters over 500 kilometers. They are rocky remnants left over from the formation of our solar system. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system and one of the most spectacular. It has 87,000 miles in diameter, so vast that all the other planets could fit inside of it. It's a monstrous toxic planet with thousands of large hurricanes. Inside, the pressures are extreme. Its immense gravity attracts thousands of asteroids and influences the characteristics of its moons. This monster has great beauty. They look like colorful abstract works of art. Turbulence within the bands create storms. Giant vortices that break out in the clouds with fierce winds of hundreds of miles per hour. There is one that governs them all. The Great Red Spot, a colossal hurricane, much larger than Earth, that has lasted for hundreds of years, with sustained winds that exceed 400 miles per hour. All of this is just the top of the planet. Inside, conditions get even more extreme. Its atmosphere is very thick and has several hundred miles of depth. Strong winds penetrate thousands of miles down. The Great Red Spot extends down about 180 miles. The temperature and pressure increase the deeper we go. But no matter how far we go down, we will never reach the surface. Further down, the gas becomes thicker and hotter, and eventually it becomes a liquid, an ocean made of hydrogen instead of water. Further down is where things get really strange. Instead of a mantle, like the terrestrial planets, Jupiter has a huge region made of metallic hydrogen. At these extreme pressures, Hydrogen undergoes a strange transformation. It can conduct electricity like a metal. It's hotter here than on the surface of the sun, about 10,000 degrees Celsius. Its large gravitational field holds many moons. It has a total of 79 moons. The ones of greatest scientific interest are the first four moons discovered beyond Earth. The Galilean satellites. Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Io, this colorful moon catches the eye. It has many active volcanoes. It is the world with the highest volcanic activity in the solar system. This is because it's between Jupiter's powerful gravitational pull and the other two moons, Ganymede and Europa. A 
frozen world. Europa is one of the most promising places to find extraterrestrial life. Underneath its icy surface, there is a vast ocean of salt water. Jupiter's gravity is creating friction inside, heating the ice to turn it into water. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, is even larger than Mercury. Like Europa, it could also have an underground ocean, but much deeper under the surface. Callisto, Jupiter's most distant moon, is an ancient and desolate world full of craters, due to millions of years of asteroid impacts. It could also contain a subsurface ocean. Saturn has captivated our imagination. It's one of the most amazing planets. Not the only one with rings, but none have rings as spectacular and complex as Saturn's. It's a gas giant, the second largest planet in the solar system. From afar, the rings appear solid. But if we get closer, we can see that they are actually made of countless small pieces of water ice. Each particle orbits the planet independently, like millions of small moons. Despite their size, they are incredibly thin. They have an average thickness of about 10 meters. They may have formed when a moon was shattered by a huge collision. Some particles are larger, some are moons. You can see how they interact with the rings creating waves while orbiting the planet. When small moons orbit Saturn in slightly inclined orbits, they can create waves in the rings. Tremendous vertical excursions that can reach several miles in height. This gas giant is similar to Jupiter. Inside, the pressures are extreme and it has many storms. At its north pole, there is a rather strange one, a huge hexagonal vortex. Although it seems quite unusual, vortices like these are common on planets. Saturn's moons are very interesting. This one looks like a planet with an atmosphere. The great moon Titan, the second largest moon in the solar system, 
larger than Mercury. It's an extraordinary world. It is the only world other than Earth that is known to have liquids in the form of rivers, lakes and seas on its surface. This moon is icy cold, so cold that gases like methane and ethane are liquids. This world has clouds, rain, rivers, lakes and seas of liquid hydrocarbons. These lakes and seas may possibly harbor life that uses a different chemistry than what we are used to, that is, life as we do not yet know it. Enceladus. This icy moon has great potential to harbor life. Like Europa, it has an ocean under its surface. Geysers spill water vapor and organic chemicals from that underground ocean into space. From now on, the Earth will be so far away that it will be impossible to see it with a naked eye. These worlds that we will visit have remained hidden throughout history. Uranus, the ice giant, cold and windy. It has one of the strangest climates in the solar system. It has the coldest atmosphere of all the planets, minus 224 degrees Celsius. The pressure inside the planet can break methane molecules, compressing carbon in them so tightly that it forms diamonds that fall to the base of the mantle like sparkling hailstones. The planet is so tilted that essentially orbits the sun on its side and also rotates in the opposite direction. It has two sets of beautiful rings. We are getting further and further away from Earth, and we've just began our journey. We arrive at the furthest planet in the solar system, Neptune, dark, cold and buffeted by supersonic winds. We are far from the sun, here its light is faint and it takes four hours to reach us. Neptune has the fiercest winds in the solar system. These incredible winds lash frozen methane clouds across the planet at supersonic speeds of 1,500 miles per hour. And 
that's it. The last planet in the solar system. We feel the sun's heat less and less. We see less of its light. We are very far. But there are still several worlds to explore. The dwarf planets. Worlds that are too small to be considered full planets, but too large to fall into smaller categories. There are many dwarf planets orbiting the Sun. We'll visit a couple of them. Pluto, smaller than the Earth's moon, has a glacier shaped like a heart the side of Texas. This fascinating world has beautiful mountainous landscapes, but with red snow. This world is very cold, with temperatures of minus 226 to minus 240 degrees Celsius. Three times farther from the Sun than Pluto, we find Eris. Not much is known about this world, but we know it's extremely cold, dark and likely has a rocky surface similar to Pluto. We're about 6 billion miles from the Sun. From this distance, sunlight takes over 9 hours to travel from the Sun to us. We haven't even left the solar system yet. It's a small point in the vastness of the cosmos. It's time to leave it behind. interstellar space. We are very far from our Sun. It's difficult to differentiate between the large number of stars. Billions. They have planets and moons like our Sun. The distances are so great that if we travel at the speed of light, it will take years to reach our next destination. The number of miles is incomprehensible. We have to use another measure, light years. The distance that light travels in a year, 5.88 trillion miles. With so many options, it's hard to decide where to go. Let's start with something close. Its light takes four years to reach us. We have to travel a little faster. Alpha Centauri. They are so close together that from afar they look like one single star. 
Actually, this is a system of three stars. The third, Proxima Centauri, is quite far from these two. Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, two stars similar to our Sun. They travel through space, orbiting one around the other. Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf, contains only about one-eighth the mass of our Sun. This planet orbits it. Proxima B is a little bigger than Earth. Maybe it has life. Kepler 452, a star similar to our Sun. Has several planets. This one is similar to Earth in size and is in the habitable zone, where it's neither too hot nor too cold. Life could exist. What it would be like? It's hard to imagine. We've come a long way. We are 1400 light years from Earth. There are several interesting things that we left behind. The Seven Sister Star Cluster is a feature in our night sky. At 410 light years, it's clearly seen from Earth. It has captivated many minds throughout history. It originated a Greek legend, the Pleiades. They are the seven daughters of the Titan god Atlas and the sea nymph Pleon. During an ancient war, Atlas rebelled against Zeus, the king of the gods, who sentenced his enemy to forever hold the heavens on his shoulders. 
The sisters were so sad that Zeus allowed them a place in heaven to be close to their father. The Pleiades are an example of an open star cluster, a group of stars that were born almost at the same time from a gigantic cloud of gas and dust. The titanic star Betelgeuse is incredibly huge. Our sun is 109 times bigger than Earth. That's pretty big. But it's nothing compared to this gigantic star, 950 times bigger than our sun. A red supergiant is in its final stage, about to explode. It will be a huge supernova. cosmic work of art, composed of a star that was once like our sun. Now a dying star lies in the center. When it finished burning its fuel, the ancient star ejected its gaseous outer layers leaving behind a tiny hot dense core called a white dwarf. The star's dusty outer layers crumble into space, glowing in the intense ultraviolet radiation ejected from the hot stellar core.
The Orion Nebula. A huge cloud of gas and dust in space, 12 light years across, formed by supernova explosions. Many stars are forming here. The turbulence deep within these clouds gives rise to knots with enough mass that the gas and dust can begin to collapse under their own gravitational pull, forming stars. It is sculpted by stellar winds, ejected by young stars that emit powerful ultraviolet light. The most famous supernova remnant, the Crab Nebula. When a star meets its end, in violent fiery death, it spews its insides out into space, creating an expanding wave of gas and dust, known as a supernova nebula. It's so dense that a teaspoon of material from that star will weigh 4 billion tons. At its center is a pulsar, a neutron star. It spins very fast, once every 33 milliseconds, shooting out beams of radio waves and visible light that spin like a beacon in a space. The nebula stretches 10 light years across and continues to expand, more than twice the distance from Earth to Alpha Centauri. This nebula looks like a bubble seven light years across. The sitting star that is forming it is 45 times more massive than our sun.
The star's gas heats up so much that it escapes into space as a stellar wind, forming the outer edge, giving it the appearance of a bubble. An asymmetry between the gas causes it to be off-center. What spectacular views the cosmos offers us, each one looking like a natural work of art. the Pillars of Creation. This name is due to the fact that it's an active region of star formation. Within the nebula, there are hundreds of newborn stars. If we see it with infrared light, we can distinguish them. A group of young stars paint the nebula in ultraviolet light, showing us its details. Their winds slowly erode the huge clouds of gas and dust. What could be our next destination? Our galaxy is very big. We could spend our lives looking at every interesting object. There is a distortion in the light. What could it be? A black hole. One of the strangest and most fascinating objects in space. They are extremely dense and have such a strong gravitational pull that not even light can escape their grasp, if it gets close enough. A place where gravity exists in its most intense and overwhelming form. They are born when a sufficiently massive star reaches its end. This one wanders alone in space, practically invisible since there is no material falling on it. Its immense gravity distorts the light around it. Now, let's go to the center of our galaxy, 
realm of unparalleled intensity and intrigue. There is a dense cluster of stars in the center. If we speed up time, we can see that they are orbiting something. supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, 4 million times more massive than our Sun. A large amount of super hot material orbits it at speeds closer to the speed of light, the accretion disk. The surrounding region is a cosmic tornado. The extreme deformation of space-time around us plays with our vision. Extreme gravity bends the path of light emitted behind the black hole and makes it appear as if the accretion disk is also on top. In real life, we could not reach many of the destinations we want to visit, due to a phenomenon known as dark energy, that moves bodies away from the universe in such a way that they become practically impossible to reach. Those bodies get further and further away, making the observable universe smaller and smaller. All this time, we have been breaking the rules of physics and the limits of space-time to reach our destinations. Now, we will travel so far that some places will be totally different if we travel to them instantly. The light we have seen from Earth from our next destinations is millions of years old. To make things less complicated, now we'll not only travel great distances, 
we'll also travel back in time. In this way, at some point, we'll arrive at the beginning of everything. Our galaxy is full of interesting things. We can spend forever exploring. Billions of stars, billions of planets. But we have to go on with our journey. We have to go further into intergalactic space. From here, it is as if Earth never existed. We cannot even say there is a small point in space. It is invisible among so many stars. And now, each point of light is a galaxy, each one with billions of stars and planets. This really makes one feel small. Now, we have to scale everything up. Distances are now millions of light years, and sizes will be hundreds of thousands. Let's move on. Our neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, is 2.5 million light years from Earth. It is huge. It measures 220,000 light years. It's much larger than ours. From Earth, in a fairly dark sky, it can be seen by the naked eye, as a patch of light larger than the full moon. Our galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy reign as the most massive and dominant within the local group of galaxies. In the future, this galaxy will collide with ours, in about 4 million years. The universe is very big. Each destination is further and further away.
30 million light years from Earth. What's happening to this galaxy? It's quite irregular. Its disk is distorted. Huge flame-shaped hydrogen clouds sprout from the central region. Millions of stars are born there, ten times faster than in our galaxy. The interaction with its neighboring galaxy is believed to have triggered the large starburst. Twenty million light years away. This galaxy has an extra pair of arms, shown here in red. Normally, spiral galaxies only have one pair of arms. These two arms are made of hot gas rather than stars. They appear to be the result of the violent churning of matter around the large black hole at its center. Twenty-three million light years away, the Pinwheel Galaxy, the giant spiral disk of stars, gas, and dust, is one hundred seventy thousand light years across. The spiral arms of the galaxy are dotted with large regions of nebulae. They are areas of intense star formation. The universe has its own beauty.
25 million light years away. The Graceful Whirlpool Galaxy Its structure may be due to gravitational interaction with its smaller companion galaxy that can be seen right next door. Numerous bright young star clusters highlighted in red are the result of the gravitational influence of the companion. It's triggering a large star formation in the Whirlpool. Thirty million light years from Earth. This is an iconic galaxy, the famous Sombrero Galaxy. Its hallmark is its bright core. It's white and bulging, surrounded by thick lines of dust where many stars form, giving shape to its spiral structure. In the center, there is a smaller disk. A large amount of material falls into it. There resides a supermassive black hole of billions of solar masses, as in many galaxies. There are many interesting galaxies. We can spend a lot of time contemplating each one. They are impressive and beautiful. It's time to go further, much further. So far, that distances will be difficult to comprehend. On this journey, the rules of time are different for us. We have been traveling back in time, millions of years back. If we continue, eventually we will reach the origin of everything.
100 million light years from Earth. We have traveled 100 million years back to see this peculiar galaxy. It's the result of a galactic collision in the distant past, hence its distorted appearance. Two extended luminous tails are signs of that collision. A magnetic monster. A galaxy that is surrounded by huge reddish filaments. It has a scary look. The filaments are suspended in a magnetic field that maintains their structure demonstrating how energy from the central black hole is transferred to the surrounding gas. The filaments are so large, the light from one end will take 200,000 years to reach the other. a ghostly galaxy, with a background of distant galaxies. Its uneven structure suggests that it may have been part of a dramatic collision at some point in its relatively recent past. It's a galaxy of telenticular type, intermediate between an elliptical and a spiral. It has consumed or lost most of its interstellar matter, so it has very little ongoing star formation. We are witnessing a pair of galaxies in a celestial dance. Long tails of stars and gas emanate from each galaxy due to strong gravitational forces. It will eventually merge into a single giant galaxy.
we are 400 million light years from Earth. This strange galaxy seems to be racing through space, leaving a long tail of stars and gas behind. Thousands of distant galaxies can be seen in the background. Its distorted shape was caused by a small interloper, a very blue and compact galaxy on the run. The strong gravitational forces of the interaction created the long tail of stars and gas that stretches more than 280,000 light years. We're getting further and further away, getting further back in time, getting closer and closer to the beginning of everything. a zoo of thousands of galaxies. We are looking at a sample of the deep core of the universe, as it was billions of years ago. A great variety of galaxies of different shapes, ages, sizes and colors. The smallest and reddest, they may be among the most distant known, existing when the universe was only 800 million years old. The closest, largest and brightest spirals and ellipticals developed about a billion years ago, when the universe was 13 million years old. These strange galaxies tell of a period when the universe was younger and more chaotic. Order and structure were just beginning to emerge. From now on, we will be exploring unknown terrain. All this time, we have explored places that we have seen from the Earth, with our advanced instruments. They are not yet advanced enough to see further, for now. However, the math and physics are quite accurate, giving us an idea of what we haven't seen yet. We might have already seen the first galaxies. If we go further back, we'll see the first stars, a universe where galaxies did not yet exist. Further back, we arrive at a dark and cool universe, where stars do not yet exist. They will emerge when gravity gathers masses of gases that will increasingly compact and heat up in certain areas until forming the first stars. Billions of years ago, almost at the beginning of everything, we arrive at a chaotic universe of ultra-hot matter. 5 billion degrees Celsius. An explosive expansion is taking place. Protons, neutrons and electrons will later form atoms matter that will become everything that exists today. Beyond that, 13.7 billion years ago is hard to fathom. Something completely unknown. Possibly the entire universe condensed into an infinitesimally small singularity. A point of infinite density and heat. What lies beyond? What happened before? 
we may never know, but our minds will never stop imagining. Our human curiosity will lead us to find the answers to everything that exists and does not exist for generations to come. We have to go home. Our lives await us on our little blue planet. After seeing all this, we feel very small. Time feels very slow. That blue dot, that is us. In it is everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was lived out their lives. The sum of our joy and suffering. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and gatherer, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant, every young couple in love, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every crooked politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and every sinner in the history of our species live there, on a speck of dust suspended in a zombie. Earth 
is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors, so that in glory and triumph they could become momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of that pixel on the barely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager to kill each other. How fervent their hatred. Our posturings. Our imagined self-importance. The illusion that we have a privileged position in the universe. Are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck of light in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is not a hint that help will come from somewhere else to save us from ourselves. Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit, yes. Settle, not yet. Like it or not, right now, Earth is where we have to stay. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. Perhaps there is no better demonstration of the foolishness of human prodigies than this distant view of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to treat each other more kindly and to preserve the pale blue dot, the only home we have ever known. Carl Sagan Thank you.